Hello, my name is Rich and welcome to FPL Surgery Podcast and welcome of course to our viewers on YouTube as well. Um, as always, I'm here with Dave. How are you Dave? I'm doing all right, man. I'm very excited for this one. This is going to be uh, Tinker Heaven today, and I'm very much looking forward to it, man. Yeah, th I mean, this is this is the big one. You know, I think this episode always probably gets the most listens. It's the one, I think it's the most important one anyway, because we want to get off to a good start. Yeah. I particularly want to get off to a good start after last year. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to say anything. I was gonna, but I didn't. <laughs> I mean, you, you, you would have said something, I Dave. Um, I would have. <laughs> Do you want to outline what we've got on the show today? Yeah, so headlines today are Deadline Dilemmas. We've got Building Your Game Week 1 Squad, Man City Help from members of our very own Slack channel, Rich, and our current drafts for Game Week 1. But before we get into any of that, Rich, we've got a very special guest today. We do. I mean, we almost don't even need to introduce him. I did think about not even bothering. But um, <laughs> we, we today have, he was a former co-host on the show it's Stefan and his record. I mean, I knew it was good. And then I, I, I found your team. I, I looked through it. And I mean, in the last four years, he's finished 2.6 K 1.7 K. He finished 80 K while hosting the podcast. Um, and then last year, 150th. Welcome <laughs> Stefan. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. good thanks. Um, I'm a bit nervous since uh, the last time I was on, I had the season. That was the, that was the season. Everything went wrong. So by doing it again today, I think I'm, I'm risking it, but uh, let's, let's hope uh, for a better result this time. Yeah. I mean, you came on the pod quite a lot last year for your 150th finish. So maybe it's just not being on too often. Maybe that's, maybe that's the key. Yeah. <laughs> and maybe not COVID hitting and uh, things turning really bad, really fast. But I guess yeah. I learned something from the 1920 season when COVID first hit and took that learning into last season, I think. So it okay. wasn't for nothing. What what kind of learn learnings were they? Uh, patience, I think, and uh, the last thing I did uh, when the COVID hit, uh, I was wild carding. So I, I, in the double game week, where, which uh, turned out to be a single game week, and I was impatient. I was just trying to get it done with, get it done with. But uh, yeah, patience is always key. Just it it always wins being patient. Yeah, but let's not concentrate on that season anyway. I mean, you've just come 150th. I'm sure you're confident you're going to top it this year. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Re regression to the mean has been a topic I've heard a lot in the podcast. Oh, no, so no, those are it, oh, those are bad it, words. We don't say that. <laughs> yeah, yes, it really applied to me as well. But I can still finish quite high, although not that high. I think that will be a struggle. Yeah, but uh, you never know. You never know. So, Dave, do you want to plug the YouTube channel for uh, for those watching? Yeah. So if you are first time here we would love for you to subscribe we have so much pre-season content my fingers are actually like little stubs now the amount of stuff we have been working on and doing for pre-season has been insane so we'd love for you to stick around and subscribe and let us know what you think and then of course we've got loads of series and things that we're going to be doing across the season as well as this pod every monday so please subscribe that would be absolutely fantastic we would love to have you yeah, and I just also want to mention our Patreon as well. So sorry to throw so many things at everyone, um, but our <laughs> Patreon is available at patreon.com forward slash FPL surgery. And it's a really good time to join because there's a lot going on at the moment in the Slack channel. Our goal scorer challenge league is about to begin. The prediction league is about to begin. Mm -hmm. We're going to cover some of the other bits that have been going on, on our Slack channel under one of the headlines as well, because um, there really has been a lot of stuff. And of course, we're going to start doing our, our doubles league again, um, which was it was a lot of fun. Although I was partnered with Gabrielle and he doesn't <laughs> want to be partnered with me ever again after last season, um, which was a bit disappointing. That's but really you can funny. be part if you join and want to be in the doubles league. You don't have to be with me. Um, but I'd appreciate <laughs> if, if if someone was. That would that'd be oh, very mate, much I'll appreciated. I'll be with you. I'll be with you. We can do it together. <laughs> well, imagine, we, imagine we come bottom. But yeah, no, that's brilliant. That's all, all we wanted to say on that. We're going to have to get straight into this because this is an important episode. This is a big episode. Mm. So we get straight on to our first headline, which is Deadline Dilemmas. Perfect. Yeah. Now, I think people's opinion on this has changed a lot over the last couple of weeks. But Bruno or Bruno has been a big discussion. Rich FPL asked a question on Twitter. What are we saying, guys, with Bruno? So, Stefan, are you going for Bruno at the moment or are you going to risk it without? I don't think Bruno has pretty much been out of my team at all. And I think it's a, it's a twi Twitter kind of storm hype. I, I'm not sure why people are so 
eager to get Bruno out of their teams, I guess, early on when you tinker, you you try a lot of stuff and it's it's fun to just mess around with it. and it's obvious that you can get a good team without Bruno, but for captaincy, his ownership, uh, I guess you pretty much need him in. And that goes for um, both uh, the first games where he can hurt you just with his huge ownership and also for game mix uh, three and four, where I guess you would captain Bruno over Salah. And I think uh, that is reason enough to, 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 to him in. In addition to that, if, say, we come to game week four and Kane is suddenly playing at City and he needs to come in, Bruno is the the one you can sell to to manage to get Kane into two moves. So you'd see Something. Bruno as a, as a longer or, or at least a medium term hold. It wouldn't be someone you'd get in and then look to sell immediately. You've actually got a plan over no. the first few weeks. Yeah, I guess if uh, he plays very deep and uh, uh, Premier League doesn't give out any penalties anymore uh, as a general rule mm. because of the, the, the new rules, I guess it's okay to sell him at some point, but I see absolutely no reason not starting him. In, uh, starting him. And uh, so for me, it's not been a dilemma, dilemma at all. Really, I was worried you'd say that, Stefan. But I sort of, yeah. I sort of knew, I sort of knew you would it, as well. Um, it, it's very predictable, I guess. I'm very predictable <laughs> playing this game. What about yourself, Dave? Are you are you on Bruno or? Yeah, I haven't it, really it, taken him out of my team yes. at all, and it's not it's not because I don't want to. Like, I really like the argument, and it's quite a healthy debate. And and I really like the fact that not everyone is going for the same premiums this season. It seems like it's a bit more up in the air and there's a lot more variety. But at the same time, like variety is just not for me. I have learned from past mistakes. I would rather go with the risk-free of having him and being able to downgrade later on and miss out on maybe one or two hauls from you know, the Jotas, the Maras, all that stuff, all the Sons that, that people are going for in his stead, the Manes potentially even. Um, I would rather miss out on those one or two game weeks than me having to scramble and take hits to bring Bruno in because I've missed out on his stuff. It's just the risk is too big for me and I'm going to go risky on other places in my team, but definitely not with the premiums. So I'm just kind of, yeah. I'm just going to chill out with Bruno. <laughs> me and I Bruno. did, um, I did flirt with no Bruno earlier in the week, as you may know, because we did that, you made me do that team reveal. Um, I do know. And I had Mane at the time, but there was a few <laughs> things that changed for me with that. I, I like the idea of going Mane over Bruno because I could maybe switch to De Bruyne in game week two. Obviously, now we know De Bruyne's injured and might be out for a, for a little while. Mm -hmm. And then I was looking a bit further into the data as well. And I mean, Jota's, you know, his attacking numbers when he plays are incredible. So I just think I'm, I'm probably going to squeeze Jota in there, which yeah. would then be my third Liverpool slot. I'm sure we get onto an, another Liverpool asset later on as well. Um, <laughs> there is another one emerging. Um, but I just couldn't justify going Mane. So I think Bruno might end up in there by default. And I mean, as players go, he's not a bad player to be in there as default. But maybe I won't be as patient as as you guys with him. Um, yeah, because but... when we when we did that draft, you were very much in the idea of I'm I'm just going to, I guess, admit to myself that I'm going to sell Bruno immediately when someone else comes along. And so therefore, what's the point in even starting with him? if I'm going to want the likes of Kane or or De Bruyne and stuff. But um, I'm curious to know what changed your mind with Mane. Are we going to get into that? Um, I mean, on on the screen, we've compared Mane and Bruno's numbers yes. over the season. Um, the fancy I mean, football hub membership area. <laughs> yeah, go in the link uh, on the podcast or, or obviously on YouTube and you can sign up for 25% off there as well. Um, but yeah, I mean, looking at the numbers over the season, yeah, I just I, th I think I just wanted to go for go for Bruno. And then if you go to the next slide, we compared Mane against Jota. And I mean, yeah. Jota has a lot more shots on target when he plays than Mane, a lot more shots as well. Um, I mean, obviously, Mane's a little bit more creative, but I, I just thought Jota was a better option than Mane. I mean, what do you think, Stefan? Um, you know, if, if someone was looking at Mane against against Jota, for example. I think you're looking at the, the player that is uh, uh, most overpriced and most underpriced in the game so <laughs> Mane coming in at I had this slight hope that when you're it was the summer and you're, you're thinking okay I'm going to base my team around the, the players who had had the summer off no international duty been training all, all the, um, summer having a great preseason and thinking that maybe Mane Salah double up could be something but then he lands at 12 million and it's completely it's it's way 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 too much money for him he should be 
maybe 10.5, 11, some, something, a, a Sterling type of player. And yeah. uh, Jota, Jota should be really priced as Mares or, or something like that, because when he plays, as you say, he's worth a lot more than 7.5. The only issue is, of course, that Firmino is there as well. And yeah, um, I've been high on Jota all, all season, and I said just earlier today in, a, in another short Norwegian pod, uh, I said that Jota is one of the guys that is definitely in my team. And uh, nine hours later, I, I'm not so sure anymore. <laughs> so th- things change, but uh, Firmino scoring a couple of goals right now. He shows his back. He's not going to start. Jota is going to start against Norwich. That's for sure. For but sure. What happens? Uh, yeah, that's. Uh, I can. I can never guarantee anything in life, but I can say 97 percent certain that Jota will start against Norwich. But and then cent- after centrally Norwich, centrally as well. Yeah, probably, but they change around a little bit uh, up front. But after that Burnley game, I guess anything can happen. So uh, yeah. he's he's got one great game and it's against Norwich. And uh, Norwich uh, pretty much don't have any players, I think. They are with the COVID situation and right doesn't look good. It's, uh, it's going to be a slaughter. Yeah, so definitely Jota over Mane. I think Mane is way too expensive to, to even have near your team. Jota is good. And I won't say anything against Jota other than maybe some other Liverpool players are emerging, right? You said, Rich. Yeah, I mean, Mane was mainly I had him for price and more of a, more of a placeholder, but maybe, yeah. maybe I was overthinking it there. But I thought maybe earlier in the week, I was thinking Mane is going to be definitely nailed. And Jota's not, but I have changed my mind there. So yeah, that's why I can, af- I can afford Bruno now, probably. I have, I have probably. a question about Jota. Now, obviously, we, we talk about whether a player is going to be good. And then we put in the caveat of, oh, but his minutes might be managed. He might not play against Burnley, blah, blah, blah. Like, when is it okay to have these players knowing that they won't play every game? Because we've done it before with City players. Um, I know that Rich has a love-hate relationship with a particular City player that has this exact same problem. Um, but would you say, Stefan, that, that Jota's worth having your team despite him not starting every game? Yeah, I guess so. And I, I know putting Jota in when everyone is healthy, I think you have to expect him to be benched at some point. Yeah. Uh, but the other thing with Jota is, you saw in the springtime, he actually was preferred ahead of Mane versus Manchester United when Mane was uh, benched. So, uh, And he's the youngest guy of the, the guys up front. So I guess maybe Jota will get more and more and more time as we go along. But I'm not sure how it will impact things short term. But I was ready to, right. to start him. Uh, and I think still you can pretty much start him and be happy with it but you have to also be happy with him getting 30 minutes off the bench sometimes it it, it, it will happen but i think maybe the same will happen for sala at some point when the, the games are coming yeah. uh closer and uh, mane also they will they will rotate maybe they will play all, all four up top sometimes as the midfield is a bit the uh, thin shape, at yeah. the moment <laughs> it might happen but uh I think Jota is pretty good, but I wouldn't, and then my dilemma has been, you don't want to have too many Jota types in your team. That can maybe cause a bit too much problems. Like right. having, yeah, yeah Greenwood, least, for I, example, Greenwood is, an, is a similar type player. He should start the, the first games, but then maybe, who knows, maybe he will be benched for Sancho coming in, Pogba playing on the left, Cavani coming back, playing the striker. It's very hard to predict and having too many of those players are, are a bit tough. At least but, it appears uh, there's a lot a lot of players you can jump onto that at those at those price points. I mean, I guess I'm thinking more like players like Rafinha, um, etc. Because Jota does also yeah. have that habit of getting little injuries here and there as well. Um, yeah, so several times so, he's done that. So that's a good thing. Say, uh, I, I, I've been pondering. Say, you start with a Morris and a Jota, and if prices are kind to you, you can make those two to Son and Rafinha, who's uh, way more secure players. Yeah. But the, the short-term fixtures for Jota and Maris both playing Norwich in the first couple of games, it's very tempting. Although my <laughs> usual mindset is like, if you're going to get Son by game week three or if you're going to get Rafinha by game week three, you might as well just get him game week one because you're, you're just starting to plan transfers and 
oftentimes it ends up in a mess and maybe an early wildcard. So yeah. I'm not sure that is preferable. I had, I had originally been like, I'm going to just start Mares and then get Rafina in game week six or something and just stay with him. And then now I'm thinking, well, I could actually start with Jota and then go to Mares and then go to Rafina. But then by that time, yeah. like, <laughs> and then, you know, after that, I'm going to start planning where Rafina's going. If he doesn't work it, what about where, Son? When does yeah. it end? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Son who? I don't care about Son, to be honest. I'm, he's not even on my rate. He's too much money. But, um, but yeah, no, a, a 7.5 million, you know, Liverpool striker potentially against Norwich is, is very difficult to, to let go. But on the screen just now, We've got Jota versus Greenwood up there, and you can just see how much better Jota is when he actually plays. Um, the The goals are, were very, very similar, um, but the 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 thing is with Jota is that his his per game started is so much higher, almost double. Um, so yeah, I think that, and his xG is also a lot higher. But we know that Greenwood is is sort of one of those players that can score from any amount of xg like it doesn't have to be big but in this it just shows that you know again talking about uh going back to the mean like i think jota's mean is is a lot more consistent so yeah yeah i think so i mean yeah green was not very renowned for his for his xg is he um and it, it does no. show and i think it's unfair because like stefan said jota's you know he's considerably underpriced so it's almost like you're comparing greenwood to a premium player even though he's not priced um as a premium yeah i just wanted to you know while while we were on liverpool actually um i've learned to pronounce his name taught by stefan um but we've got to mention the elephant in the room that is simicas who's playing as as we're recording at left back with robertson injured yeah um so i mean stefan is that gonna be is he in your thinking basically uh, yeah, of course, when uh, things happen, like uh, Robertson just put out that he had some ligament damage and he was uh, pictured wearing a cast, uh, maybe a bit similar to the Maguire injury, who knows. So I, I guess maybe Robertson will need some time, say, until the la- uh, first international break, maybe, something like that. And that means Simikas should play against Norwich and Burnley and also probably Chelsea, but you can... You should maybe bench him for that game. <laughs> and he's uh, he, he's put in, a, I'm not watching the game anymore, but he put in a great assist for Firmino for a goal. And he has been on some set pieces and he's 4.0. So when we're talking about Jota being underpriced at 7.5, we can pretty much talk about Simikas being underpriced at 4.0. And oh, yeah. whereas, whereas you will think that Simikas is a short-term punt, which he of course is... Um, you shouldn't expect to get more out of it than maybe Norwich and Burnley to two good games, and then you should bench him for Chelsea. And after that, probably uh, Robertson is coming back. But the same is pretty much the case for Jota. You expect two good games in uh, Norwich and Burnley, which he hopefully starts both versus, versus Simikas, who actually will start both, I guess, now. Mm. Uh, and then Jota is against Chelsea. He could be benched. And if he's not benched there, he could be benched against Leeds. So selling Jota for game week three isn't like a very insane move, I think. Uh, so it, it's, I think Simikas is pretty much interesting. And he locks up a few opportunities, even in, as we can look on later. Even is in he- uh, yeah. Oh, sorry, I was just going to say it's interesting because, like you said, there's two players that we see as underpriced and then there's two players we see as essential. So it does put people in a lot of dilemmas. And I mean, I think I know the answer to this as well, but would you consider going Simikas over Trent, for example? No, I think that... Uh, <laughs> everyone, everyone that was just listening sense. just went no in their head. Yeah. <laughs> I heard a thousand people shout it out. <laughs> yeah. I think as we just saw, we have some other interesting midfielders and uh, I know Dave said he didn't like Son, but I think Son is a pretty good player. And then as long as I saw some rumors that Kane could start against City, uh, I guess that will hurt Son a bit. So maybe it's good to not start Son from, from the start, but you have a, a Morris kind of guy in there. You can play, say, a 4-3-3 with Morris, uh, Fernandes and Salah in midfield, use Semikas as the fourth uh, defender. Or you can play Semikas as the third defender and get a lot of guys in midfield, like, say, Greenwood, for example. Gundogan is pretty much in the same price bracket. So you could do some interesting things with Semikas back there for a couple of games and then have a guy like Ailing, for example, to to cover cover for him when 
you would need to bench or for Chelsea. Yeah, yeah I think Leeds are playing yeah. um, Burnley in game week three, so yeah. it's a perfect cover eye. Ailing and the four point Ailing and Samikas will work pretty pretty good, I think, in the start. And yeah. of course, if this was on a wild card, I will never ever ever pick Samikas because you're two moves away from moving. That for the first off, you don't have any money to move from Samikas, and you need yeah. to get. Some, someone like Robertson or or Jota, it will be very hard. But we are playing until the first wild card here. And if that is around maybe game like seven, game like eight, I think that's uh, what most people are talking about and what looks most natural. Uh, I don't think you're you're locking up that label spot for too long with Zemeckas. But, but who knows? It, it might become a problem, of course. Could James Milner not come in and ruin everything and start playing left back sporadically and steal Salah's penalties as well? Just while, while we're captain him, could <laughs> yeah. he could he do uh, that? I, I'm I'm pretty I'm very very sure that Salah will take penalties and not Milner, even if Milner is on the pitch. I think that's uh, Salah won't give them away anymore. He, he's scoring every single one. Why should they give him away? But. Uh, Milner on left back, I'm not sure. He's played there because they needed something, someone to play there. But Curtis Jones got injured now again. Uh, Thiago is uh, still carrying some some injury. Henderson is just back. I think Milner is needed in midfield. And Simikas is actually a left back and he's putting in good crosses and he's taking set pieces. And, uh, and he's 4.0, what's the risk? Yeah, <laughs> well, I'm... Actually who plays. <laughs> it's going to get well, the to point. Jota. Ah, that's but what just, I was going to say. You don't yeah. get to play. You don't get to have all all, all four of them, right? Because we Trent and Salah are locked, so you can only pick one of the new one of the guys. So who would you yeah. rather have then, Jota or Samikas? I'm not sure. <laughs> this, this, this <laughs> You've been tinkering changed. for nine hours straight. What's your? <laughs> yeah, I, I was taking a taking a run uh, and uh, clearing my head, but it just gave me more ideas. So I think I'm still. I'm still a bit stressed. Begin. It's Monday. It's getting closer to Friday, and the, the drafts are pretty much coming up all the time, and things change. But hopefully now the preseason matches are over. Nothing more would change. No new injuries. No yeah. new transfers. <laughs> hopefully yeah. things settle down now. I, I guess but the I, argument for going for Samikas over Trent would be he doesn't score that many goals, so you would have to. And like you mentioned, this is before we wildcard, so. It's unlikely he's going to score in the first three or four weeks. You might get unlucky and he gets an assist or two. But that money, if you could spend it well elsewhere, it, I mean, it's, it's a gamble. Just, and you know I like, I like a gamble. So I think that would yeah. be the argument because it's three and a half million difference. It's it's a fair fair chunk of money, that. But then are you going to have both Jota and Simikas? Because that brings you two problems and not just one. Ah, this but is for the like wild a wild card, card to save us. Yeah, like a wild card <laughs> gaming four. You're kind of guaranteeing that you're not going to be able to hold that for the yeah. long haul. And and it's Norwich and Burnley, so I really think uh, Trent should be in there, anyways. Plus, but so the last spot is more likely to rise in price than than Trent. I'd I'd imagine looking at patterns over the first <laughs> you know couple of game weeks. That's true. Yeah. I think still it's a decision between Simikas or Jota, and I think you should have one of them. I think uh, triple triple is uh, is the way to go. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure that's the way I'll go. I just wanted to make the counter argument. <laughs> um, play devil's advocate. Yeah. <laughs> um, so should we move on? So Luca Dean, obviously he's one of the dilemmas at the moment. He was in a lot of teams, and now he's after a friendly the other day, he wasn't on all the set pieces. Everton looked a little bit shaky, even though it's a friendly. And I think people have got a bit scared of Dean and are now moving towards Shaw. Um, So, Stefan, if we start with you, I mean, what what are your thoughts? Yeah, if we move like three or four days back, I was on uh, Digne and Shaw for most part. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's a bit... It maybe shouldn't be the way it is that one preseason game changes your mind that much as with Digne, but he didn't take any set pieces as I could see. It was Townsend and it was Gray who took them. Uh, the Everton attack is pretty much non-existent. No Calvert-Lewin, no Richarlison, no Gulfi, no... Uh, oh, okay, Hamas did play, but the, the, the other three didn't play yeah. and they're not, not going to play now. So not sure who he's aiming for in the box anyway. Townsend, Gray, and they <laughs> look pretty much. They, they, United could have scored a lot more goals, I think, and 
I'm not sure. I I was pretty set on Digne, but also for the formation and the structure of the team, I think it's it's of course an advantage to just have one 5.5 defender and not two. Yeah. Looking mm. at how many attacking options we have, it may be good to not lock up too much uh, budget in defense and have it available for uh, for the attackers. I'm I'm in the exact same mindset. So we were talking to FPL Matthew for Eight Simple Rules, and he said that every single season he loves having two 4.5 defenders that he can swap about, and he does that all the time. So I've been tinkering with with my teams and have been using that module, which means I really only have three spaces for expensive defenders. And it was always Digne on my on my team until that. And it was the exact same reasons. He was he lost the free kicks and he's passing it now to I will be. <laughs> like yeah. it's not happening. I'm just I refuse. And the the best thing is is that I was actually going for I think it was Sufal, Trent and Dean. And now because I'm a bit off, Dean. It means that the scary ownership of Shaw is no longer a problem because I own him now. Like, I was going against Shaw, and I think there's going to be a lot of people who are in the similar mindset as me, like, oh, you know, Dean has better fixtures, he might be a bit more attacking, blah, blah, blah. But really, we were looking for an excuse almost to get rid of him for Shaw, in my opinion. And then as soon as it came, it came in abundance, which was we lost 4-0 to United, the same team where the other guy plays for. It's very difficult to, to go against it. Just made the Iceman remove Dean. I've just seen it in the chat. Um, but yeah, I mean, I had I had Dean in my in one of my latest drafts, and I actually agree with that point you just made. There's there's so many good 4.5 defenders. So yeah, I'd like to make the most of it, get a bit more money in attack as well. And we could always come back to someone like Dean later in the season. I mean, he he's not that explosive. Um, obviously, we've got some stats again from Fantasy Football Hub where we've compared Dean and Shaw over the season. They're very similar. And I mean, Shaw. Yeah, and Shaw, they're very similar, but Shaw has a lot more chances created. He also has more touches in the box and passes in the final third. There's not really much, apart from big chances created, that, that Dean beat Shaw at over the, over the season. And that ownership of Shaw is scary. And I, th- I think a lot of people must have watched the his goal in the Euro, Euro final and just push, push Shaw in because that kind yeah. of ownership for defenders. It's Man United tax. It's uh, England in the final tax. Um, there's a lot going on. But I, it was Big Man Baker on Twitter was getting uh, asked about this. He put, posted something saying, you know, Shaw's got really good stats. And a lot of people were like, but you know, uh, he crosses a lot, but they're not very, they're not big chances. They're, they're just, they're just chances. Like they, it doesn't really go anywhere a lot of the time. Um, but his answer was really, really good, which was, yeah, but it doesn't matter if they work or not that adds to his bonus. So if he scores or he gets an assist and a clean sheet, like his bonus potential is going to skyrocket because of the amount of chances that he does create. Um, so that was the counter argument to the, the fact that he might not cross very well often whereas dean is more i think an accurate crosser like he, he doesn't do as much but he's very good at it and he's and it just shows he has four more assists than Shaw on last season but the set yeah the set pieces are so important for dean i yeah. think i think we're all in agreement yeah. anyway we could always come back to him on wild card or maybe a different everton defender at a cheaper price yeah um let's move on to chelsea so um fpl sexy so brett he's asked are we overlooking chelsea defense and he said they are champions league winners as well um, so, so we, we put together a graphic where basically the, on, on fantasy football hub, you can sort by predictive results over the first eight game weeks, which is probably quite a long, quite a long span to be looking at. They mm. are top. Obviously it's boosted because probably because of the, you know, game week seven and eight. Yeah. Um, but Stefan, I mean, Chelsea defenders, have they crossed your mind at all? No, I, I like to think that, uh, especially after last season, that I, I might somehow read Pep and his selections. And we have some great other people that helps with that as well. But Tuchel, I have no clue yet. <laughs> I, I fell into the... I did the Alonso punt before the second wildcard. And that seemed like a, a good punt. And he started as expected against West Bromwich. The, the only problem was they, they let in five or something. Mm, yeah, 5-2. Yeah, 5-2. Five, 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 yeah. Five, two, yeah. <laughs> Uh, after that, I figured, okay, so he has to play Chilwell in important games, Alonso in the easier games, and that means Alonso will get this and this and this. And I kept him in my wildcard, and that was just completely a complete mistake because I, I can't read Tuchel. And 
I don't think anybody can. And uh, just looking at Harvard's, uh, Chelsea was battling for fourth place, but Harvard's barely played in, at the end in the Premier League. So you can see all the, the stats are put up per 90 this, per 90 that, but Harvard's have, haven't really played anything on the yeah. Tuchel in the Premier League. So I'm not going to say who's going to start for Chelsea. I, I guess the game like one team will be pretty much what is expected. But then again, Chilwell with the England squad, who knows, maybe he... I, I, I have no clue and I'm not prepared to take a guess on Chelsea. I'll wait. If we can hold the wild card as long as game week, uh, is it seven or eight uh, where it turns for Chelsea? I think that may give us enough info to say if there's anything to go from for Chelsea. And they, nope. I fear that Tuchel will continue to rotate as a, as a maniac and we have no clue to <laughs> guess who, who's going to start because they have Champions League, they have other cups and they have the World Club Cup coming up in December. Who knows? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah you know, it is a nightmare. I mean, Lampard was hard to predict, but then Tuchel is it's even worse, like you say, Stefan. I did see a tweet um, earlier in the week that was suggesting all the England players that you know are in the Chelsea squad probably won't make game week one. So I don't know if it's confirmed, but obviously that's, I mean, that's a lot of them. That's Chilwell, that's James, that's Mount as well. Yeah. Um, so we yeah. could see, and, and that might weaken the Chelsea team as a whole as well. And not only that, it, it weakens them, but like game week one is one of their better fixtures. That's the one that you'd want to kind of target. Stand out. Yeah. Stand so out if they're not going to have yeah. those guys, then what's the point? I'll, and of course, like we'd have to get rid of Shaw or Trent or our West Ham defender or whatever. Like you're, it's not just are we overlooking them, but are they better options than even those three teams I just mentioned? Like I don't, I don't think so. Exactly. I could just wait. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not getting burnt by him again. Well, I know when <laughs> everyone jumped back on him when they, when they lost against West Brom, and it was only stubbornness that saved me there. But yeah, I'm, I, I want them. I know they're good, but it's just knowing who to pick. I mean, even Mendy was rotated at points at the end yeah. of last season. Oh, that was a nightmare. I had him as well. <laughs> <laughs> I was sat there without the goalkeeper in the crucial weeks. It was a weird it's... season for goalkeepers as a, as yeah. a whole last season. It really yeah. was. Um, and. I think that moves us quite swiftly and quite smoothly on to our, our goalkeeper um, discussion. Because basically we, we wanted to discuss, you know, who's the best goalkeeper. I think the most popular ones are Sanchez and Martinez. Um, there's also Backman as well. Um, obviously, Sanchez and um, Backman coming up 4.5, whereas Martinez has that 5.5 premium. Yeah. But Stefan, have you managed to solve the goalkeeper problem and are you set on who you've gone for? Yeah, in the last table you had, you had during the first eight game weeks, uh, Brighton was uh, pretty much up there in the expected clean sheets. And that yeah. is all I'm going after. I'm going for Sanchez and I'm going for a defender. And if I'm going for Buckman, I'll probably have two defenders. That's the only reason I'll go for Buckman. And I, I'm, I, I think this is purely an... It's a, sort of a cowardly pick from me because I know in my mini leagues people will get Sanchez in the elite samples on FPL review people will get Sanchez yeah I think it's just the easiest to go Sanchez and I, I'm pretty much burning myself on goalkeepers each and every season I, I went late on Martinez last season I sold Pope season before that before he started to save penalties and rack up a big huge point point total so I'm not confident in my ability to pick the goalkeeper, so I'm going with the herd here, and I think I'm pretty pretty happy with going with the herd and Sanchez. Yeah, I mean Martinez is higher owned, or is, yeah. that, is not in the elite sample? I'm guessing. Yeah, I think the, the, if we have some ambitions in this game, I think the people we want to compete with uh, is having uh, are owning Sanchez a lot mm. more than Martinez. So. I guess over 38 game weeks, we have a better chance against the ones who starts with Martinez. Even though Martinez, of course, can do something crazy and start up with yeah. 30 points in the first three game yeah, weeks. I can see that. <laughs> he, that. He can do that. And, and Sanchez, one thing about him, it was said that he is not that good on bonus, but he actually does get a lot of passes. So it's not completely out of the question that he gets some bonus. He, he usually gets those 30 passes that you need to, to be able to get some BPS from it. So it's uh, it's not. He got eight bonus points last season from ten clean sheets. It's not great, but it's not terrible either. Yeah. And uh, at, this, at this point, also we have this uh, injury to the second goalkeeper, the new one in Brighton. So we have the Sanchez Steel combo is back on for eight point five. Really, I didn't know that. Hold on, let me get my team up. 
Yeah. <laughs> Dave just changes his team mid pod. It's so um, difficult guess, not to take. Yeah, by the way, but it was interesting because <laughs> so we've got on the screen. Obviously, we've got Martinez, who is a premium keeper. He made three point seven four saves a game, and then Sanchez made two point four four. Yeah, Backman only played the back end of last season in the Championship, and he was only on thirty five saves, which is one point five two saves per game. So he's he's not actually that great for saves either. I mean, the only game I saw him against was Reading and he should have conceded two goals. So he's lucky as well, that guy. Um, I guess the only argument against Brighton could be they've had a lot of injuries in defence in particular. Yeah. So that could maybe have an effect or is is that just not enough to worry you? It could have an effect, but there's pretty much no alternatives. I guess Buckman is an alternative and the saves could go up and should probably go up as they're entering the Premier League. But... Uh, so far, the, the preseason game against Crystal Palace, it looked like there was some shocking defending there. And I guess in Brighton, we just have to trust that the system Potter has is uh, good for uh, keeping the goals away. It's good for keeping the expected goals away. Let's, let's see. Yeah. <laughs> keep the keep the goals true. away. I'm sure, missing, stars, uh, White, yeah, I'm sure missing White and Burn will hurt them, but they're getting Soli March back, who has also been pretty good before he's, he got injured. Of course, and, and the main man, Dun- the main man dunks there as well. Um, yeah. Dave, you were looking for something. Did you find what you needed? Uh, yes. You, yeah. All right. Cool. You just <laughs> just checking, just checking your team. Oh, that! I yeah. know. Oh, I was putting steel in my team, so there we go. We sorted. <laughs> oh, yeah. You can't yeah. change your team during while we're recording. I, well, you, you yes, can. I can. You can do what you it want. It was mate. really just, easy. <laughs> as long as you're wearing trousers. Um, <laughs> we'll move on now to our next one. So this is our final dilemma, and then we're going to get onto some drafts as well that Stefan's put together. Um, it's, it's basically just a general discussion, really, on Kane and Lukaku, and how how we're going to fit them in. So. It's, I mean, Stephanie, are you thinking that far ahead? Are you obviously we haven't got a price for Lukaku yet? Kane's priced at twelve point five million. Mm. Yeah. So if you start with three strikers, which I was very much against, uh, like nine, ten, eleven hours ago, I'm I'm getting warmer to the three strikers again now. If you start with three strikers and Bruno, you have pretty much any option you want. Then you can switch Bruno and any other strikers to to Lukaku or Kane and still get a decent defender back for Bruno. So say if you if you have uh, Tony and Bruno, you can get uh, a 6.0 midfielder and Kane up top. Yeah. So it pretty much sorts, sorts everything. And after that, uh, Kane, you have that price point and you can drop down to Lukaku, which will for sure be a lower price than Kane. So I think that pretty much settles it. Um, you have to be willing to drop either Bruno or Salah. If you don't own Bruno, you have to sell Salah, most likely. And I think you, you sh- never should sell Salah unless he has COVID. <laughs> or that's, that's, gets why, him again. that's why I was wondering, um, obviously, when we started the pod, how long you'll keep Bruno? Because I think that does come into the decision for me, where I'd probably have Bruno more as just uh, just so I can get to Kane or, or Lukaku or both. There yeah, is an option. More easily. There is an option that Bruno bangs, and he, you don't want Kane. Like there is that that can happen. Bruno did beat Kane last season. <laughs> like it's but it's then not if like Kane's, we're, yeah. we're, we keep talking about how Bruno's like this like you know placeholder, but he's True. actually a very good player. <laughs> yeah, he, he's definitely not a placeholder for me. And if you look at his at his fixtures, they are pretty great up until game week eight, where and game week eight is a likely game week to wildcard if you can hold yeah. on to it. And that's that long. also when uh, Lukaku starts playing very easy players around that time as well. It yeah, kind of works out yeah. perfectly. So, so my issue is more that uh, am I going to go for Spurs? How about game week three? Do we captain Spurs against Watford? Do we want to do that? Yeah. If so, can I get to Son? Is there any way for me to get to Son which doesn't just throw out my whole team? Mm-hmm. That is maybe as important as getting to Kane. Because if you're going to get to Kane, you're selling Bruno and he is probably the best captain for game week four uh, at home to Newcastle. Yeah. yeah. There are rumours that... today as well that Kane might be playing game week one um, for yeah. Spurs, we imagine, against against Man City. Um, yeah. I th- I think that moves us quite nicely on, actually, if we go into our second headline. So, Stefan, you put uh, a few different drafts together, because I guess a lot of questions we've had is, you know, how you go about building a draft. Um, so you put, you know, a variety of them together for us. So I guess we start on this one you put together, which is a 4-4-2. So you've gone for Sanchez, Trent, Shaw, Soufal, Veltman, 
Then you've got Yota, Son, Fernandez, and Salah, and then Tony and Antonio up front. Um, yeah, and this is basically the draft that uh, makes you pretty much secure for captains for a long, long time. You, you can you can start off with uh, Son, Bruno, and Salah. You, you can actually manage to have them all if you're playing four at the back. And given this, you you don't have to worry about captains until game week eight. Uh, I'm not sure I have to worry about captains forever, really, <laughs> with uh, Salah in there as well. The only question in, in this kind of draft is, of course, the, the latest developments in Ings suddenly becoming an option. Uh, he looked great uh, yeah. in Villa's last game. That might turn it around a bit. But uh, uh, And it's also the question, if you own Bruno, how much better is it to captain Son against Watford than Bruno uh, uh, away against Wolves? That depends a bit about how Wolves are looking. Are they more attacking? Are they still trying to put everyone in defense? Yeah. How is Son looking, etc. Uh, so that that that's the question. So, so maybe Son in here is too much. I, I'm not sure. Uh, well, you could do. I think so, that's, yeah. Just looking at this with the, I mean, the midfield is obviously where the where the money is and and where this is going to bang. But because of the developments now with Liverpool and Robertson and um, you know the new 4.0, you can afford. Maras, and you can still upgrade to Ings if you wanted with this. So if you go down to Maras, then change Veltman to the 4.0, and then you can get Tony in for Ings. Like there is flexibility in this team because you have Son there. I think if if you had tinkered it away and gotten rid of them, and you know, at least there is money in the midfield we can take from. But I love this 4-4-2. Like it's you don't see very many four four twos, but you've got everyone there that you could want. I mean, is there anything that you'd be scared to not own in this team? Yeah, it's of course the Ings. I think Ings is getting a lot of traction now and uh, he, he's looking a good option. And uh, where I thought Villa was pretty much good for three games and then it's stopped with the, the fixtures. I think uh, Everton at home in game week five is pretty decent fixture uh, yeah. now. So so maybe I was a bit harsh on Aston Villa and Ings is, is a great player if he stays fit. So, so what you can do in this yeah. type of scenario, you can you can switch it to Jota to uh, Semikas, and you can put the money in Ings up front. You have to sacrifice Sufal as well, but yeah. then you have Ings in there, and you have a four-three-three, uh, which also looks pretty good, I think. And you also any draft that have some, you can easily also have Mars and bank the million if yeah. you if you believe in Mars and want to have Mars for his game against Norwich, and you feel the rest of your team. Isn't that much in need of a transfer? Uh, like, say, you're avoiding Greenwood, uh, who is maybe a question mark for later on. If you, if you reduce the number of question marks, you, you maybe could have Morris and then look at Son for a couple of games, let Morris have Norwich, and then decide, do I go for Son? Do I move the money elsewhere? Do I downgrade Morris? Do I keep yeah. Morris? So you'd keep the money yes. in the bank just in case. Yeah, you could do that. Or, or it's not terrible to keep that one million. I think, given that Mars is is uh, expected to do better than Son for the first two games, anyways. So this the is the first thought... of. Sorry, I'm just going to read it out for the the listeners. Oh, I've already read it out. Oh, did you? Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, the whole it's thing. already been read out for the audio listeners. But uh, yeah, I really like the the four four two. Um, obviously, with Tony and Antonio up front, I think it works really well. I guess it is just like you say. It's that not having the Man City asset. But then I guess then that comes back to where you said Son against. It's on against Mares. I, I just think yeah. four four two has the most best balance because there's good cheap defenders you can get away with every week. Yeah, and I think so. And of course, the defenders so the my bench here is a bit thin. And uh, Amarte, I'm not sure he's going to start. Yeah. Maybe we'll learn some more from from Rogers. But keeping a clean sheet against Manchester City should help. And also, I have Brownhill in there in on the bench, and I think he maybe should be switched out to Gilmore or something, a, a guy with yes. even better chances to start because uh, Scottish, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I, I think Gilmore does it take some uh, set pieces? Yeah, I think he, does. he does. And uh, and Brownhill might not even start given that Cork is back. So I think uh, I missed that, and I learned that today from uh, from a good friend that uh, Brownhill yeah. might e- might not even start. So that's the one thing to to keep in mind when looking at the drafts. So none of them are, of course, final. It's uh, more to to look at some type of different options and how you could prepare for the future. Yeah, it's all yeah. about making sure that this is this is something you could go forward with and have plans in the back of your head and what 
what to do if A, B, C, D, or E happens. You've got these like branching ideas and themes and it's it's really good. So the, the thing that I, I think I like the most about this is that the, there is so much flexibility. This is probably the most flexible team um, other than the bench. And really that is a decision that you've made previously while building it you're, you're purposely it's not like you wanted all these players so you had to dingy your bench this is like no what can we do when we have nothing on the bench um on purpose and then it also means like because of those decisions they can easily be reversed like you were talking about you try son for a bit if it doesn't work out you've got this or you could go mara as the start um so i think if anyone was like worried about flexibility or worried about these question marks that we're talking about i think I would recommend going with this team because it seems like it's the easiest to fix mistakes, as it were. Yeah, and in this team, you basically have no transfers planned and you have uh, the options to, to play around with the Jota money, I guess, when you, yeah. when you need to do something. And he's pretty pretty good priced in the midfield there. So I think this is, this is an option that the only question mark on this team is no inks and uh, also that uh, Son may be... I'm not sure you need Son when you have Fernandes, and that is a question. So that maybe we should let Son answer for us during the first couple of game weeks and then decide. Yeah, I really like the idea of keeping the million just in case and going. Yeah, with especially with especially with that Man City game up front, uh, up up first. That is. Um, so Stefan's also made a three-five-two team as well. Um, I actually yeah. really like the three-five-two or the st- the structure of it anyway. The structure of the three-five-two. Um, so, so what are the main differences here then, Stefan? You bought in Gundogan. Um... <laughs> you, you sell you sell some and you spread the money to to uh, Gundogan, Greenwood. You can even put Rafina in there, of course, over one of them. But the thing about it's basically a team that uh, screams, I, "I want to have some City players." And Pep is, hasn't been clear about the KDB injury. He's been he said that Foden was out for a month, I think, and he said that the KDB is out for shorter. But mm. how much shorter? Yeah. What's his injury? It's a big bit of a guesswork. But we know that when De Bruyne doesn't play, City need Gundogan to play. And when Gundogan plays without De Bruyne, he, at least last season, he went pushed a bit uh, further forward. So that might happen again. And that is the hope uh, in this kind of setup. Um, but, I'm, but I think you should maybe try to push uh, Greenwood to kind of a uh, inks type here as well i think i have some drafts on the on that later this was made also before i realized inks might be someone i need in my team i'm, I'm not yeah. i'm not uh, sure, certain on that yet it would be really easy though you'd put obafemi into inks take greenwood down to whoever and uh maybe change veltman or ailing to um the new liverpool guy yeah yeah, 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 yeah. You can solve it with Semikas a lot of things. Yeah, you can it's been good. Yeah, that extra point five. Yeah, yeah I guess um, one problem with this is, it, I guess if you were looking to get Kane or Vardy, what you've done is you've you've taken a bit of Son money out and you've gone for Greenwood and Gundogan. I guess it gets it harder to get that money into the strike force if you go for a, a balanced three five two like this. Indeed, and this team is looking with the Greenwood, Jota, Gundogan midfield along with Fernandes and Salah. It looks very exciting for the first game weeks. You can expect maybe fireworks from Greenwood. He gets some starts. Gundogan has Norwich. He should start as uh, De Bruyne is out, pushed forward. Jota can fire a hat-trick against Norwich. He can start against Burnley again. Mm -hmm. But then you might have some problems having a thin bench and Jota and Greenwood who might become problems. Gundogan can bring good back. So suddenly you have a bunch of problems to fix and you have no real way to get to, to Son, for example. So we have to trust that there's a lot of mid-priced midfielders to, to pick from. So yeah. so the strength about 352 is you get a bunch of money in midfield and there's often very good value in midfield. But the drawback is your you have a lot of players to move out and shift around suddenly because uh, not is not everyone is that nailed. And of course, again, no inks. Yeah, it's the exact opposite to the first team where there was, you know, maybe one or two iffy things. This is like, you are definitely going to have to make three transfers in the first three game weeks. Like this, this is potentially one of the more riskier ones. Um, Agreed. But it's going to be so good for game week one. You're going to get like 100 points and then game week two <laughs> yeah. is going to be like four points. 
with uh, if not every Gun does answer. anything <laughs> does, does something against Norwich <laughs> yeah of course I've got uh, a question because I've noticed that obviously you've been using the kind of similar bench and we can talk all day about the new Liverpool guy and, and blah 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 but in regards with uh, Obafemi now that opened with Ings moving it opened him up to potentially starting but now obviously we've mm, got no. Armstrong gonna be <laughs> there and you know even if he was first choice striker sub that's good enough for me to have third place on my bench but do you care that they're now gonna be buying a striker yeah i think obafem is going out on loan so he's definitely out of the player oh, pool is he? but yeah, so, oh, so, right. so we have to move to the next next one in southampton which is uh the his uh, name is in ludulu and lundulu i'm not good on pronouncing that name no no it's okay but i think I think you have to sort of accept that the last person on the bench is dead uh and yeah that should be fine i think Amarte, Leicester is going to buy a centre-back, I'm pretty sure of it. But if you can squeeze like two or three starts out of Amarte, maybe he's good enough bench cover. So, uh, okay, fair uh, point. But I'm feeling um, you should consider that, of course, the riskier team you have out on the field, the more you need that extra 0.5 on the bench so you can maybe bounce Amarte up to uh, uh, Ben White. Because yeah. Ben White, Ailing, and Weltman does a really good rotation. You can play two of them at the same time also. And you get that extra bench cover maybe along with a Gilmore. There's, yeah. there's a lot of stuff. And, and that's, of course, the, the really good thing about three strikers is that you you probably get away with having the dead, the dead, defend, the dead bench players. Yeah, because their midfielders are still playing. They're just, you know, two points. Yeah. Except for yeah. Gilmore, of course. He's going to get a lot of hat tricks. I'm sure. <laughs> if and he we... gets one assist, uh, I'll be happy if I need to play him. <laughs> First and we've got team. one more team, is that right? So we've got a 3-4-3, three, three, and then we better go for the piss break. Uh, yeah. So this one's got Ings in. Yeah, you can skip that one. Let's go to the next one so we can get the piss break then. <laughs> because this is, uh, this is the, the team that I think, a bit depending on the defenders, but you have Sanchez in goal, Arnold, Shaw and Sufal in the three at the back. Sufal could be, say, uh, Veltman for the first game week, and then you have Eiling uh, on your bench instead of Amarte, if you want to spread the cash a bit. Yeah. But then you have Jot- Jota, Rafinha, Bruno and Sala in midfield, and Ings, Tony, Antonio up top. I think this is the team that will basically be the, the template team for, for the start of the season. Yeah. Uh, you, you could maybe push Rafinha to a 7.5 million player. You could do that. You could throw everything outside uh, out if you want to go for Semikas as well in there. But uh, I think this is pretty much a very safe way to start the season. And you, you have no City, so you have to be a bit nervous about them. But other than that, this team has pretty much everything you, you need. And it's well balanced. You have a decent bench. You don't have to stress with transfers, and uh, it's good. <laughs> yeah, I, I think if I had like a, a friend came to me and asked me to give them an FPL team, I think I'd give them something like this because it does seem you know very safe. There's a lot of ways they can move. I think yeah. if it was my team, I'd want someone a bit more fun than Rafinha. But yeah, I know. But uh, it's not always fun to get points. No. The, the no, fun is really there, though. So you've got um, TAA, Sean, Sufal, and Sanchez at the back, as per usual. But then the midfield is still there's still a little bit of differential there with Jota. Rafina is obviously a long term transfer, so that you can use that transfer on someone else. And I'm assuming that that would be the Jota area, or maybe even Sufal if you wanted to mess around. But the the whole point for me when people are picking Rafina first game week, it's not so that they think that he's going to do extremely well in the first couple of game weeks because obviously their fixtures aren't the, the best and that is going to hamper his output. It's so that they don't need to waste a transfer on him further down the line when their fixtures do go. But the waste of a transfer, is, it's, not, it's not so much that you're wasting it. It would be then you're now transferring that transfer onto someone else. So where where in this team are you going to be using that? And I think it's obviously the, the Jota situation, unless we're going to be talking about the whole Bruno moving to Kane thing, which this team can also do, like we talked about with having the three strikers. Yeah. So there is places to use that Rafina transfer, definitely. Yeah, and you have uh, you also have a couple of strikers in Ings and Antonio who's not... They, they do get injured. So uh, this team is... You can relax with this team. You can wait until you need to do something, then do something. And it's it's no rush. It's no need to do anything you're rash you you yeah. just have to sit and be patient 
there was uh, something that's people in the chat, um, I think it was Xavier, uh, talking about Barnes. There's been no Barnes in there. And I'd seen a lot of people talking about him as that in that sweet spot, that potential, that price point. Is that someone who you've been tinkering with at all with these teams? Yeah, the, the closest I've come to Barnes is if you if you look at this team, you have uh, you do, don't have that many transfers to to uh, to use, and you pretty much have to say I'm going to captain Bruno in game week three, yeah. unless you're going to go go for Kane and get crazy, and then that leaves you with the option to say Jota plays at uh, home to Chelsea. He might not even start that game. Let's take a punt on Barnes against Norwich and roll two free transfers, and then do something more next week. Uh, right. Make that uh, Jota spot uh, work for you. Yeah, so yeah, that's where the chances longest... are going. Yeah, and then you can always say, okay, then it's next up it's Ings who has Chelsea. Maybe uh, Ings wasn't all that good. Okay, you're dropping him down to Jimenez who has a good run, and then you roll the two transfer transfers. And so this, that's the kind of thinking you're gonna do with this team. I think, at least from my point of view, you're just switching yeah. around trying to. to take out the players who had the tougher fixtures who may be disappointing you a bit, maybe he gets injured, and then try to to get on those players that have shown something. And I think Barnes, so far, he's looked good. Rodgers had talked him up a bunch, but there's still this Kelechi uh, back there. Maybe he's not going to keep the 4-2-3-1 forever. Maybe it's going to go back to two strikers sometimes. Um, yeah, I'm glad to wait, uh, wait a bit on Barnes. But I think when I, three, yeah. when, I, when I said it, it could be a bit more fun, I think what I was thinking of was Barnes, actually, because you could downgrade Soufal here, couldn't you, to a 4.5, like you mentioned, Ben White, and then you have the yep. money to upgrade Rafina. And I don't hate Rafina, I actually like him. Um, but, you know, if you wanted to get that extra 0.5, I guess that's where you'll get it from. Um, yep. But I think what we're going to do now is we're, we're going to go for the piss break quickly. Um, then we're going to come back and we're going to go through... With the help of members of our Slack channel, so Ron Frosk and Emma, we've got some stuff on Man City, um, some really good tools we can use there. Um, then me and Dave are going to go through our drafts, um, and Stefan, you can say what you want on them, nice or nice or bad. And then if we've got time, we'll try and get through a few questions as well. So time for the piss break. Perfect. So in the piss break, um, mm -hmm. we were talking about it and the people can still hear us by the way. Hello everyone on YouTube. This is secret chat that only you guys can hear. Um, we were thinking about just doing like, like questions for the chat or something. I'm not sure what okay. we want to do. Unless well, you guys actually have having, having a piss. But... Yeah. Right. Go for it. <laughs> Stefan, you, you guys, cool? you guys can do that. Yeah. Awesome. So if you guys have any chat questions in the chat, um, for us, unless you need the toilet as well, and I'll just do it myself. Stefan, what are you thinking? Can you hear us? I was muted. I was muted. Oh, okay. <laughs> so we're going to do some chat <laughs> questions if, if there's anyone in chat. Because what, yeah. what, what's been happening is we do the piss break for the, the actual audio. And then, but then the YouTube guys are just kind of sitting there waiting for us to get back. Whereas it's yeah, just yeah, like yeah, a little flush. Yeah, we flush. can go on from. Yeah, I'm going to just look just... up. I'm just going to look in the chat and see if there's any like good, decent questions. Maybe from previous. Vardy will haul against Wolves. How will the new Wolves manager set up? They play high line. Vardy will have space. Have you been thinking about Vardy at all? He's too expensive, right? He's too old. He's too old. Oh. Yeah. He's about... over it now. I was <laughs> said it last season and he, he showed it in springtime. He, he's not going to score much anymore. He's, uh, he's going to get more injuries than goals soon. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not saying right now, but... I mean, uh, it happens. Yeah, I think happens. maybe that's why they bought this uh, Pat Daka guy as well. He's a quick, quick player who can... Yeah. Maybe take over from Vardy 70 minutes. in a while. Yeah. Come on when everyone yeah. else is shattered. What about uh, Wilson? Someone mentioned Will Fadzil Fadsley mentioned Wilson a little while back. Um, anything? Mm. Any? I think he, he comes up good on the algorithms, but I, I don't trust him personally. I think his, his goals are maybe a bit fluky. They seem to come out of nothing and suddenly just stands there and scores from <laughs> one yard. Kind of like Ings yeah. though, except Ings, Ings kind of scores impossible goals in my opinion. Like he's just, yeah. he just gets the ball and he knows where to put it most of the time. It's, Whereas Wilson's more like, yeah, he, he gets the ball and he's locked out into putting it in the back <laughs> of the net. With, with Ings, it's the fixtures and his uh, great season a couple of years ago when he, he's been great as long as he be, he's been injury free. Yeah, and there was that big yeah. thing, wasn't there, with, with Ings and people not wanting to jump on him because of the injury stuff. But then he played 
uh, at least some minutes in every single game that season, all 38, um, without an injury. It was just a shame that last season it kind of got cut short a little bit. Um, we had It's Raw saying that he loves your voice. Oh, there you go. <laughs> yeah, thank you, thank you. And then Flapjack is in the chat saying, I had, <laughs> I had to go to the toilet. <laughs> we know yeah, me. That's so why there's a big thing saying piss break at the front. That's how that works. Um, I us- I usually used to go when uh, we, uh, we were recording pods with Iceman, with James. No, I think, now, I think we could just be a big boy and not have to go. I don't want to. <laughs> Hello, Rich. You're Hello. Back. I'm back now. Do you well, I any... thought we have to use, we have to have the piss break. That's why I drink. I had like a pint of water. I've had a little bit of wine. You've been going just out so that I, wine. We don't waste this time. Yeah. No. No. Of course. I mean, you doing it in the honour of the Ice Man. <laughs> I like the idea of having the chat listen to our rubbish. Like we'll just answer questions and just talk randomly. What are you like talking about? Minutes. I could probably was it Ings or something? Uh, we were talking about um, your amazing amazing singing voice and i said that if you come back i'm gonna get you to sing something i'm Um, gonna say that if i if i can get in the top 10k this season i will no i think if you sing now you will get into the top 10k it doesn't work like that (laughs) (laughs) how do you know you'll never know isn't it worth the risk isn't it we see we see if i don't get in the top 10k i should have sang at this moment (laughs) um okay let's go back into it all right you you ready to go yep he said, yep, through his wine. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we are <laughs> we are back from the piss break. Um, like we said before, we're going to go through uh, our current drafts, me and Rich. But before that, we've got a little bit of Man City help from the members channel. Our yes, Slack we do. Channel. Yes, we do. Um, so the, the first thing, so Ron Frosk, he's a member of our Slack channel and has been for a long time. I think long before I even signed up to the Patreon. Um, and Ron Frosk has been working on this spreadsheet. And I mean, Stefan, you probably know a lot more about spreadsheets than I do, but it, mm. it's incredible. And he's tracking all the preseason minutes um, of all the players, all the teams. He's got um, expected stats in there, all sorts of stuff. So, Dave, do you want to do you want to show the, the I took a screenshot yesterday um, when I was speaking to Ron Frosk. And basically, I've looked at all the, the highest owned Man City players. Um, and we can see their minutes from preseason. Now, with the actual spreadsheet he's made, you can do custom, you know, you can customize this however you want. But it's it's just been really useful um, planning yeah. my team. Um, this isn't something he's selling or anything, by the way. He's just made it and he's put it on our Slack channel. And, I mean, it just shows, you know, Man City-wise, Mares has played 294 minutes preseason, scoring three goals and two assists. This is awesome. Um, it, no, it really is. I and mean, you could do this for every team. So Mendy, he's been playing 287 minutes. Cancelo's played 285. And Andino, if anyone cares, has played 274. Hey, he cares. And Diaz has played 270. So they've all made four starts. Um, so you'd think mm-hmm. Diaz, you know, Cancelo, Mares, I don't know about Mendy, they could be good assets to start with. Then we've got Gundogan, um, who's made three starts. Ake's played three, but he... I mean, after the community shield, I don't think he's going to be getting many minutes. So we um, shame for him. So we shame. And st- Stones returns. But yeah, no, it's just it's just really useful. Um, and I just wanted to shout out Ron Frost because he's put a lot of work into this. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, key, what do you think? There is you, make, you make a lot. You make spreadsheets yourself. Um, so you probably appreciate how much work this would be. <laughs> Yeah, and I'm gonna I'm gonna talk to him and take a look myself for for the players that I'm interested in for the different teams. But the thing is, with City here, you can see the Morris is the one to to actually go after, and he's had a good preseason. He's had a long preseason, long summer vacation. Uh, Bernardo Silva is rumored to want out of Manchester City. Uh, Foden injured, De Bruyne injured. Who is gonna play right wing? It, it pretty much has to be Morris, I guess. Mm-hmm. So he's. Uh, and he can even be a player that you can keep for a while if he has the penalties as well, which is rumored to have. I'm, I'm not. I wouldn't put Morris on 100% of the penalties, but I guess he takes uh, them internationally, doesn't he? So it's not like he's yeah. averse to it. And he's uh, on some free kicks as well. So I, I, I really like Morris, and I've done a lot of drafts to fit him in. But uh, <laughs> unfortunately, it's not easy to fit everyone in, especially with the, the latest oncoming uh, Ings bandwagon. 
Yeah. Uh, so yeah, it's it's funny though because you've actually mentioned two players. Like I remember Mares at uh, Leicester. He was pretty bad at penalties, and Ings himself. Um, I looked it up earlier. It's not awful, but he's taken. Um, I think he scored nine penalties and missed three. I always remember the one he missed when he was going for the golden boot oh, at the, the end of the only time I ever capped yeah, him season. as well. Oh. I remember. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's just it can be one of those things. They they might both be on penalties, but then it's like that, Ollie Watkins not being on penalties almost became that. a good thing because he was so so bad at them. Um, to be fair, you missed a hundred percent of the shots you don't take, right? I'm, I would I would rather my guys be on penalties than not be on penalties, right? No, you're right. You are right. It's just I think something to take into account is you know it can go it might be rubbish at penalties. <laughs> yeah, glasses the glasses are full after all, isn't it? So. But yeah, that, I mean, that's a brilliant tool by Ron Frosk. And there's other other comparisons I've done as well. We're not going to have time to share share all of it now. And obviously, there's been minutes, there's been games tonight. So this is quite a lot of manual work where Ron Frosk is having to add, you know, yeah. minutes as as they happen. But another great plug for the Slack channel. Gee, I didn't. I, I, I'm I'm so excited to get this stream done so I can go and download this. And like yeah, it's, play honestly, with it. it's it's good. It's helped prep him for the show as well. But then we've also got Emma, who's in our Slack channel. She's obviously been on the pod before and she's been doing a lot of work. Now, this is all available on, on Twitter. Um, she works with FPL Meta and We Rogue. And mm -hmm. basically, they try and predict Pep Roulette every week. And they were pretty successful um, for the for the for the community. I always want to call it the charity shield but the, for the community shield. They were pretty accurate. And I believe they use I think they use the Man City forums to put them together. But. Again, definitely work, worth checking out Emma. So she's at Jump the Wave on Twitter for the work she does on Man City rotation. So I think there's two pretty cool things we can use there um, going going into the season for Man City. There's yeah, nothing yeah. like this for Chelsea yet, though. Um, but maybe, <laughs> maybe one day. Maybe yeah. one day. Chelsea, Chelsea's only been doing this fixture rotation for, I don't know how many, like maybe a year. Pep's been doing it forever. Like, yeah, <laughs> maybe, maybe that would be Emma's next. Emma's next project would be two shell, two oh, shell roulette, yeah. or something beginning with T. I don't know. Yeah, let's. Yeah. let's <laughs> but yeah, no. tumble. <laughs> <laughs> wow, brilliant. Um, but we'll get on to say so thank you to both both of them. Uh, we'll get on to our drafts now, and um, then then we'll have a bit of time for some questions as well. Perfect, so, Dave. All right. There's there's your team. Do you want to read it out, and then Stefan can give a little bit of little bit of feedback if you don't mind. Oh, that'd be great. I would love some feedback. I know he's going to love it, though. So no feedback necessary for me. Um, Sanchez, Sufal, T.A. Shaw, and Ben White in the back. Uh, we've got Salah, Bruno, Ben Rama, and Mares. And then up front, we've got Antonio and Ings with no Tony. On the bench, we've no. got uh, the classic Foster. <laughs> Always start with a keeper. And then Ailing Gilmore, of course, and uh, Obafemi in that uh, third forward spot. Um, the team itself is literally just how do I afford Mares without giving up Bruno? Um, I haven't tinkered yet with, well, I have, but not when I took this picture, um, with changing white to um, Sim Simicas. Um, I, I think one of the things I was thinking was, like I said before, do it, keeping Mares um, for a later transfer and starting with, um, you know, a, a Liverpool midfielder in there, um, in the shape of Jota. But the problem is, is that not only is that a transfer, but then that means that I can't have that 4.0 million, like, like we talked about earlier. So I think because of the emerging Robbo, um, substitute, it means that it's made my decision up for me. I can save 0.5 million and keep Maras in that team instead of going to Jota first and worrying about a transfer. So I actually really like just the idea that I don't have to worry about Mares versus Jota anymore because I can't have Jota now because I'm going to go with a, a, a second defender. So there we go. That's the team. Yeah, it's looking good. All right, Rich, your turn. Thing... <laughs> yeah. I will take that. I would, I, I, I would, we, haven't, we haven't talked about Panorama, but I would... Definitely save the 0.5 from uh, Ben White. I, if you put Simikas in there, I guess we just saw that Simikas and Ailing will rotate quite fine. You give Simikas yeah. the first two and then Ailing plays Burnley. And then you have an issue uh, when uh, Leeds faces Liverpool and Simikas might not have his place anymore. That's okay. So I think, I think maybe I would do Veltman for Ailing just to be sure that you have a, a good player for the first eight game weeks. 
Oh, as in as in change both of them. So one be yeah. Semikas and... and and then use the point five on Benrama to get him out for Rafinha. I think Rafinha is is way 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 much better than Benrama. And well, he I'm is... not sure. I'm not sure where it came from this Benrama thing, but <laughs> I'm yeah. shocked. I'm shocked that they've been Benrama. Games. I remember last season I owned Sushek for quite a while and every time Ben Rama came on I was like, okay, that's it. Sushek's not going to get anything because Ben Rama is just going to shoot from like 30 yards outside mm. of goal. He's going to try to dribble five guys and if it doesn't work, he's going to uh, just try it again, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> it keep work. going. Sushek I mean, I had, I had Ben Rama when when most people had Sushek and it was, it was so frustrating. Um, but he's looked incredible in preseason. I mean, FPL Irons, who we had on two weeks ago, yeah. he tagged me in a in a video on Twitter, and he looked like the player I thought he'd be. You know, when he was at when he started, you know, he went from Brentford to West Ham. He looked that kind of. Yeah, I mean, he looked incredible. He looked a lot more selfish than normal as well. Which Are is you, always even like... more selfish. Uh, okay, yeah. I guess. Yeah, I mean, he is quite is... a selfish player, but he's also creative as well. He's got both both elements to him. Well, he got an assist last last preseason game, and then he got Two a goal assists. before that, right? Two assists, even. There yeah. you go. Um, Being I'm surprised selfish. Dave's ended up with him. Um, well, here we go. I'm going to tell you this. This is the the surprise for this team. Has actually got 0. 0.5 in the bank as well. Um, ah. So there you go. That's the that's the little uh, dessert at the end. Is that I've already got Ben Rama to Rafina sorted for this oh, so, so you've done it so like I, I, the point five is in the bank and i'm just sitting there pretty gonna wait for rafina's fixtures to come good and then i'm gonna swap them out and that's why i had okay. ailing in there as well was just because in this position ailing and ben white kind of worked out long term because ben white's got decent fixtures after game week five or something or, or i think it is five so it meant that i could have two uh um Leeds players with Ailing and Rafina, and I've also got Ings there, which can turn into Bamford if I need to. Um, so I would only need to make two transfers here, and I've got the money for both of them. However, now that I've got, if I take down, and I've already done it in my actual team, <laughs> if I take White out for uh, Simicast, it means that I've got a million in the bank right now. So nice, what are we what nice. are we doing with the million? Oh, 0.5, I guess. What would you do with the money then? What do you think, Stefan? <laughs> Still, uh, I think Definitely. you you got uh, if I'm to say anything, I think you got the logic for uh, uh, Ben Rama and Rafinha upside down. I think you start with Rafinha because you know he's a proven FPL asset. You know that he will deliver for you, even though the fixtures are a bit meh. First game is not great. Everton second game, you you can't see that as a bad fixture right now after seeing how Everton played this weekend. Yeah, Burnley after that, the fixtures aren't that bad for Rafinha. He's the proven asset. If, and a big if, Ben Rama actually does something, you can always go from Rafinha to Ben Rama. That's, that's uh, how I will play that situation pretty much every time. Start with a proven asset, then take go to the one who, who's proven you're right. You, you, you can still brag about knowing that Ben Rama <laughs> is going to be good. <laughs> yeah, because, because of this yeah. podcast. Yeah, well, yeah um, and, uh, all right, and, and this, uh, this, 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 this <laughs> It's it's your team, so I'm not. No, no, you you've said it now. It's but, happening. <laughs> but it's the it's the Europa League as well, you know. Yeah, and, uh, of course. And that 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 is of course that could be a problem. Uh, I mean, that could be a reason to get on him earlier rather than rather than later. I get what you're saying about you know wait to see he's proving himself. He won't um, have time after if he's playing. But yeah, then he might. Games. I mean, I'm I mean I'm starting with him as well. I don't know if you want to. Move on to move on to my team. Um, there's another thing. I don't want to make it all about Ben Rama, but obviously I was, I was <laughs> speaking to Luke at Bill Irons, and he was he thinks there's a good chance Ben Rama could be on penalties. He's saying that Rice never looked confident taking a penalty, and he missed obviously he missed his last one, and he he expects Moyes to give it to an attacker when Noble isn't on the pitch. Obviously he says we have to see Antonio ben, and Ben Rama. I mean he got what 24 attacking returns. I know it was for Brentford in 1819 when he almost single-handedly really got them promoted, and then he had 26 attacking returns for Brentford again. I know it's in the Championship. Um, I'm definitely going to go for Ben Rama. I mean just seeing that video, and I might retweet it on the surgery account. Not that I want to start a bandwagon, and there's a, I know there's a lot of other people talking about him as well, but I'm going to go for Ben Rama as my, as my one punt. Obviously we've got my team on the screen as well. Backman and Foster I've gone for, but I might switch that to Sanchez. This That's, is looking I, 
very I suspect to like my team, by the way. I'm just going to let I you mean, know that right you, away. How did you, you end up got with Ben Rama and stuff? Well, like, we both were talked... on the same podcast as each other. <laughs> yeah, and that <laughs> podcast, the, after that podcast, the conclusion was that actually Bowen, Bowen was a better asset. The reason why so I, I don't swapped know how that. You got... <laughs> the reason why I swapped that is because he wasn't in the... the uh, I think it was like he didn't mm. get much minutes in the preseason friendlies or something. And I seen the same video you were talking about. And uh, so yeah, I just I just jumped on. And also, see, when I was doing my tinker with Ben Rama, I didn't know that he was worth 6.0. I thought he was 6.5. So I was playing no, around no. with him. And then I and I saved the team. And then I looked back and I was like, how do I have 0.5 million? And it took me yeah, a little I while was, to figure it out. To be fair, I was on Saar. It's, I think it is quite close between Saar and Ben Rama. Mm. Like, both at 6.0. I just think... But I'll read my team out quickly. So back, Backman in goal, Trent, Shaw, and Veltman... At the back, I'm going to rotate Veltman with with White. I think they rotate quite well. I do quite want Ailing as well, but we'll see. Midfield, I've got Salah, Fernandez, Mares, Jota, Ben Rama. I, I love that midfield five. And then Tony and Antonio up front seems to be very very popular. I'm not actually that tempted by Ings because I know it'll be a transfer out, or I'm pretty sure it'll be a transfer out. But it's a good price point for Bamford. But before we get into the rest, of, uh, can you please just let me know who your third? Uh, Bencher is please. Oma bit Oma Do you know what? I should have put a Marty in. Why didn't? <laughs> no, I'm, yeah, just, I'm just messing with you. I'm messing with you. Yeah, this is a great team. Stefan, what do you think of his? Uh... Yeah, I like both of your teams. I think you're managed uh, very well. Um, All right. And the, and the Ben Rama thing, of course, I would do Sar over Ben Rama. Yeah. Pretty much every time because Sar he averaged 89 minutes per start last season and you you can't pre- you can't beat that even how fancy Ben Rama might look, but preferably I would do no 6.0 player, but of but in this team and in Dave's team I think both teams are are very good and both teams are even very template. Uh, mm. They have Ben Rama and who's to say you can't have Ben Rama if you want to have Ben Rama? Nobody, <laughs> yeah, nobody. Supposed- Except Nobody for you, which that. is I've taken I've put my feet in yeah. already. <laughs> yeah, I won't won't have Ben Rama, but uh, it doesn't mean anyone else can have Ben Rama. You 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 pretty much, I think you can see, uh, the whole um, podcast, Twitter's, everything. It's uh, we are pretty much picking the same players, and if not, we're yeah. pick, if we're not picking Morris, we're picking uh, Ings, and if we're not picking. Uh, Jota, we might now pick Semikas or we might pick Greenwood or something like that. It's pretty much the same players going yeah. around. And, yeah, there's 15 uh, midfielders that, to choose from, it seems like. Maybe four strikers and 10 defenders. Midfield's yeah, the hardest. Midfield's the yeah. hardest by far because like we mentioned earlier, there's like Harvey Barnes. I mean, there's I, I still would quite like someone like Sarah in my team or Harvey Barnes in my team, but you just can't can't fit them all in. I, even, I still like Rafinha. It's just because there's so many other more tempting options with slightly better fixtures that I'm going to wait for, probably for my wild card for, uh, for him. You know, I've just yeah, realized. One, oh, sorry. Go, Stefan. The one I haven't seen in any drafts, is, is, which is making me also think I shouldn't start with him, is maybe Son. Because he's, uh, he's actually a risk, though, uh, given that so few people have him in. Yeah. If you're going with him, you're risking something against uh, Template or against uh, the other guys, and I'm not sure you, you need to take those kind of risks early on. You Especially love Son. Maybe... <laughs> I, I I love Son, and I I watched uh, the the Spurs Arsenal game, and even though Spurs didn't look great for for much of that game, Son still had like a couple of big chances. He set mm. up uh, some he had some corners, some free kicks. Yeah, he's looked threatening. He's but then maybe Kane comes back in, so I think I think maybe I should le- le- leave Son alone for for this time and I maybe did, start I did. with Morris if I if I do anything. Yeah, I I did say that I didn't like Son, but it wasn't that I didn't I don't like him as a player. I I, I owned him for most of last season and he did so well for me. And there there was loads of times where I could have got rid of him. I didn't like I like him as an asset, but for the price points of this season and. The fact that not only are you risking going with him because he's low owned, but also the butterfly effect of where you're getting the money to upgrade to him. Um, it's just too, it's too hard to get, it was too hard to get Mares um, in my yeah. team, let alone try and find a million. However, I'm, just before we started in there, that little chat there, I just realized that, see, because of this new uh, Sima, Simicus in my team, that's gonna, I'm going to struggle with that name all season. Um, it means I can afford Barnes instead of Rafina to start with if I wanted to. 
And I had yeah. already put him out of my head, like, oh, I can't afford him. Or I can't get him. And I like deleting players out of my mind and taking them out of my watch <laughs> list because it doesn't fit with my, my team. And it means I don't even have to think about them. But now I have to put him back in because I can afford him. <laughs> that sucks. It's a yeah, he can, he can be great, of course. He could, he could do very well. Yeah. Barnes. And and you put more money in midfield, which makes it easier for you to actually switch to a guy like uh, Son later on without... Uh, and I don't want yeah. Ben Ram anymore because Rich has him. So just pick, just pick who, you, pick who you want, mate. I just no, thought it was a bit suspicious first. that you say our teams are similar, <laughs> but you've got Ben Rama in your team, who you mocked me for owning them last year. I I mocked yeah. you for a lot of things last season, okay? And it was including mostly just ben, whatever was in front ben of Rama. me at the time. <laughs> do we want to show... So I did do a, an alternative draft, although I've realized I messed up the amount of money to get Kane, so it You're might not even be worth showing that. No, but we've got we've got new things. We've got someone here. So this was your secret team that you didn't want to show us because it was so awesome and unique and yeah. Blah, blah, but blah. I messed. What happened? I messed. I'm. I was just thinking, if I want to get Kane soon, how could I get to Kane quickly? And this has got a million in the bank, so it's not quite enough to get from Vardy to to Kane. I'm I'm still a million short, so it's a failure on that part. But for the podcast listeners, I've got Sanchez, Trent, Short, Veltman, and White. So four at the back. Salah, Fernandez, Jota, Ben Rama, obviously, and then Tony and Vardy up front, with a million in the bank. Island first sub. What do you guys think if Lukaku comes in at a good price? If Kane, um, you know, we want to get on Kane quickly, could something like this work? Because it still keeps Fernandez. You've still got Salah. You've still got Vardy. You would need to either downgrade Jota to a 6.5 and then unfortunately you've got two 6.5 price points in your midfield because obviously now we've got uh the option if we're getting rid of jota to go for uh simicas so there's your million you could do it easily but it means you have to start with Vardy. <laughs> Don't mind Vardy. There was a lot of stuff today about um obviously the the offside rules have changed Vardy is always playing on the edge and offside yeah. So maybe the new VAR rules will benefit Vardy and he'd be a placeholder for Lukaku or for, or for Kane. <laughs> Stella, yeah, and your yeah, face yeah. changed there. Yeah. I, didn't remove, yeah. I didn't remove Fernandez. <laughs> I, I was just thinking about you, you can uh, you bank the money and start with Ings and, or Antonio and yeah, <laughs> leave like, like yeah, 5 that, million in the bank 100%. instead of having Vardy. <laughs> that could See, be I don't there. mind Vardy. I really don't mind Vardy. But when would you be want I, to I, get... I, I much, much okay. rather go Barnes than Vardy. Much rather Barnes. Because of the midfield. Yeah. yeah. See, I, 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 and Vardy's on penalties. Right, but hold on. You hey. could... But you could... This you would could be... So this, the there. idea of this, this draft was that you could move quickly to Kane, maybe in game week two. You could move to Lukaku, you know, game week three. But what it would we, be to... And in one move. But what we're saying is you could still do that, but you just don't have to have like just downgrade Vardy right now and 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 leave the yeah. But I prefer bank. I prefer I prefer Vardy to Ings. If price wasn't an issue, I'd go Vardy over Ings every time what with those Antonio? Leicester picks. I'd go Vardy over both of them. Oh, so you actually rate Vardy? Oh, that yeah. okay. Well, then well, yeah, fine. I'm not, put, I'm not putting some <laughs> crap player in just because he's expensive. I actually think he is overpriced. A bit like when we were talking about Mane earlier. But yeah. his fixtures are good. He could benefit from the new offside rules. He's on penalties. And he's I got think, great gifts. Yeah. He's going to be I subbed at Salah 70 Fernandes, minutes every game. Yeah, but Salah Fernandez and Kane is too much. It's too much. Too much premiums. Yeah, I mean, what's I funny is to. I actually, when I thought of this, I was actually just going to remove Fernandez completely. And then I thought I'd do this. It's, anyway, it's just an experimental one. This is not going to be my team. It's not. Of course, it's, it's not going to be your team. But I mean, to be fair, looking at this team right now, like it's viable. It's not. It's not as terrible as what I've I've seen other like Kane, Salah, Bruno things. But it's just too risky. I think. What you have here is a great rotation with development White and Ailing. Those yeah. three rotate extremely well until uh, at least game week eight. That's as long as I have checked. So you can play two of three of those. Two of the three of those uh, pretty much every game week. And so they make a great back four. But then, if you downgrade Vardy to to Ings. You have Ben Rama to Morris, and you have yourself a team. And you've got my team. Yeah. Except, <laughs> except, yeah. except you're, you're lacking Antonio, of course. I'm, I'm not sure. I guess the one thing you'll gain is you could get to Kane in, in one move, or, or to Lukaku in one move, if the budget worked out. Um, but 
then you're sacrificing the players you have. Like you could have a better game with one team. So I, I, I get what you're saying now. I do. Um, but yeah, funny. I just wanted to put together. But I just wanted to put that together because I was thinking a lot about Kane and Lukaku earlier, way too much when I was working, and I was thinking, is this possible? Yeah. It's the closest I could get. And I guess it does depend on if you if you like Vardy as an asset, um, which I do for some reason. Yeah, for um, some reason. For some reason. But should we get into a couple of questions? Yeah, let's do And then do we'll it. wrap everything up. 100%. So um, let me have a look. The first question is from FPL underscore sexy. There you go. That's the best name so far. <laughs> um, he says, what do you think about ailing? I don't think... Bales, hold on, I've just lost it there. Um, I don't think Bales will trust Furpo to start. Oh, I think he's injured just now. So I actually see Dallas as left back, and I think Ailing could go back to the championship position he played. Uh, when he was in Dallas's position, he was basically a right winger. So what are we thinking about Ailing? I like him in the rotation, but I, I would expect him to play uh, right back and maybe uh, deputize a bit a centre back if the. Injuries keep on going in at centre back. I think Lorente is out. Yeah. But I think also Shackleton is out, and he's been playing right back in preseason. So I guess Ailing will stick to the to right back, and I think he's he's pretty good in the rotation. As I said, Veltman, White, and Ailing, those three can rotate uh, very play two of them each and every game week, and that opens up a bit oh, a few possibilities. Yeah, they were very good defensively at home um leads so like like you say Stefan, i would want them if i'm going to go for ailing it would be in a rotation because i mean their first two home games a game week two they got everton at home then game week four they've got liverpool at home so i mean that's not the best home game then they haven't got a home game again until game week six against west ham so they're okay the fixtures do improve like from game week five on onwards um but yeah I, i'd want him as part of a rotation and, and I think like you mentioned, Dave, I think Furpo got injured today, um, but it yeah. may be worth checking that before you set your teams. I would mention, though, that if you're thinking about doing, if you're thinking that you're going to set your team up for maybe the first six game weeks and you're not too bothered about um, making sure that it's a long haul team like we've kind of shown today and you're 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 the type of manager who's going to probably wildcard game week three four maybe five then you don't really need to think about Leeds players maybe other than Rafina until you wildcard and then you can start picking who you want in because you know the the fixtures don't really do that well for Leeds until then I know they're good rotation like we talked about but if you're really only while if you're really going to be wildcarding quite early um, which is always an option, then there's so many other op opportunities that open up because of that option that you don't really need to go for ailing. But yeah, I think he was in every single one of our drafts that we just showed there. So that's what we think of him. <laughs> um, moving on to the next one is from our Patreon, Xavier. Uh, he says, I'd like to know what your hedges or takes are um, on uh for the early season so if there's anything that we have uh let me hold on just missed so it yeah so i think he's asking basically if we're looking to capitalize yeah on, you guys are planning to capitalize early this, so, this season there you go i mean it's, it sounds like stefan's looking or was looking to capitalize on on sun as a as a you know a bit of a differential i guess that that could be that could be something yeah we could, we could clear up that, of course, the Son is owned by 20%. I just checked it now. And Maris is owned by 6% or 5% or something. So so Maris is, is, in fact, the differential if you look at overall uh, rank. Yeah. But I think Son is the differential in, again, the, the guys you normally compete for or competes for top 10K. And the danger, of course, with, with Son there is 20% owned is if Maris does well in game week one, and some blanks, everyone. So, okay, I'm buying Morris. And game week two, when Morris gets his hat trick against Norwich and some go, go scoreless against Wolves, we're buying Morris. We have a chance to drop some for Morris. Uh, so, I, <laughs> I think capitalizing on something, I think it will have to be to, to try to get into the city team, uh, looking at Morris specifically. And he, he could do something good and maybe even bank the extra million for some if you want to, or put the extra million somewhere else in your team. Uh, but yeah. but uh, I'm and and the Liverpool. I want three Liverpool players, but I have no idea who I will pick in the end right now. And uh, it can go horribly horribly wrong either way. If you pick Zemikas, uh, Jota can get the hat trick against Norwich, and you're looking, uh, you're saying, oh, I had him in for two weeks, three weeks, 
<laughs> and, yeah. And then Jota can be benched for Burnley uh, watching Semikas get a 12 pointer from a corner assist. So it's uh, that one's tricky, but you have to capitalize on, on the teams that face Norwich in the first couple of games, and that's Liverpool and City, if you want to pretty much do something outside of it. And, uh, yeah, and Inks, it's of hard course, to find. Visit, Inks visits three first uh, good fixtures against uh, Newcastle, Watford, and Brentford. I think you've covered the the main two there with City and, and with Villa, because it is hard to find things to capitalize on unless you're looking at crazy things, like, you know, triple ups on teams no one's looking at. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, I completely agree with you, Stefan. Because I don't even think I know we've talked a lot about Ben Rama, but I don't feel like you're capitalising on anything. You know, West Ham have got a lot of good that good options like Antonio, Soufal, Cresswell, um, to some to some extent as well. Um, I don't really know if it is the kind of season where you can capitalise that early. I guess you can look to go different and and get lucky, um, but it does seem more template than ever this season. I, I mean, I could be wrong, but it feels like it to me. Like I remember last season. I started with Kane, Werner, and uh, what did I have? I had three premiums: Kane, Werner, and obviously Vardy up front. And Vardy. it didn't look too too strange. But obviously, we haven't got a lot of good premium strikers this year. Yeah. And you had two last time. I think the the only thing for me that I was looking to capitalize on was being able to pick whoever I wanted for the first three game weeks, and then just wildcard gaming four. Um, but after thinking about it and looking at price points and, and, and trying to figure out where I would want to wildcard and why, and, and, and this season's fixtures don't really scream wildcard early as much as last season did. Like, remember, we all had Arsenal players for the first two game weeks and then they kind of went away and there was also Martinez showed up. I had Ramsdale. There was a lot of like problems that I, I was able to solve with an early wildcard, but this time... Like, uh, I feel like it's a bit, a bit more difficult to argue for an early wildcard. But that was my, how do I, what I wanted to capitalize on was being able to wildcard early when not many people would be doing that. Um, I think the un- the unseen things, though, might make give you the advantage there. Because it's good you mentioned that about the fixtures last year, because that was obviously very noticeable. Yeah. But things like Sancho, we've not even mentioned him today. And he's on, he's obviously, he's on the graphic for questions. <laughs> but, you know, players yeah. like him are going to come into play. We've mentioned Lukaku and Kane to death. But, yeah. There's a lot I of mean, unknowns. I guess the early wildcard could be an opportunity, but then everyone might do it. So it's not. It's it's hard to know. There'll definitely. I be think a this trend. is. It's, uh, I think it's important to keep the wild card and uh, try to to take on the challenge of keeping the wild card a little bit longer. Because even when we get to game week three or four, we might not have seen a lot of Kane. Might not have seen mm. a lot of Sancho. Might not have seen Lukaku that much. So yeah. we, we might still be guessing by game week four. Yeah. So I think uh, we should try to challenge ourselves to keep it for longer. And if that means we should take a few, uh, a few, hits. not take that many punts, punts, uh, and punts. maybe you can take a hits, of course, also. But yeah. if you reduce the number of punts in your team, the, the likelihood of uh, early wild card goes down. Goes down. Yeah, yeah. Logically, uh, it makes sense to, to keep it for as long as possible because the more the longer you keep it, the more information you receive, and therefore you can bear. Uh, fill your wild card with more actual facts and information than guesswork. Um, and what do we do in in game week four when Martinez is already on like forty five points? Because uh, <laughs> we play find that can happen. Yeah, <laughs> you don't that, touch your goalkeepers. That's a good rule, I well, think. I, I'm never gonna make a goalkeeper transfer again. Just forget yeah. about it. <laughs> that was such <laughs> a good to have. It was such an obvious rule. We took it out of our eight simple rules this season because it was just something that we every single manager we talked to was like, yeah, no, don't don't make goalkeeper transfers. But it's a lot harder than than it looks because if you start with the wrong one, you know how long until you're not being. Uh, conservative anymore you're being stubborn like <laughs> there's 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 cases for everything but in um in this early wild card situation I think that with the just the lastly before we move on is that for the eight simple rules that we've been doing pre-season I think almost every single manager who has been like really highly consistent um, with their being in the top 10k being the top 1k even um, they've all said that the best thing that you can do is usually just leave your wild card and pretend it doesn't exist for as long as you can um, and that has been a consistent thing that we've been thinking about with it which is what has changed my thoughts really um, so yeah that's some food for food for thought and if uh, if you want to listen to that anymore then there's loads of youtube videos on our channel with it <laughs> it puts do you know what though it puts a lot less pressure on me setting my game week one team if i have in the back of my mind that i'm that i could just wild card when when or if i get this wrong um yeah. whether or not i then follow through with that wild card 
I think it's not. It's a nice feeling to know I've got that to, to bail me out. Get out of jail free, isn't it? That's yeah, it but yeah, Definitely. but you only get one per half season. So I think that's we're gonna have to stop the questions there, just due to timings. Um, okay. But we got through as as many as we can there. Now this is obviously the part where we do our trapped ins, so our transfers and captains. Obviously, we can't do transfers, but captains. Uh, <laughs> Stefan, if we start with you, I it's... don't know who it's gonna be, but who's your captain? <laughs> It's this uh, Samikas guy looking good today, so I guess we're going to take a So we've take, just stopped questions so that we can get everyone to say Salah one after the other. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. I think, Sorry, the most important thing, I think the most important thing in this category is the, the transfers and the teams that have been shown, especially by me. I'm, I'm going to make no promises at all that I'm going to keep any of the drafts that we've seen. I'm gonna, I might switch everything up. I was... I was burned earlier on today with all the pods and I was saying no Villa and here I am with Inks like a few hours later. <laughs> things change, but hopefully things will change a lot less the coming days. Hopefully we'll get some uh, uh, good information in the press conferences, no big surprises and we can have a few days to settle things down and have a good thinking uh, thinker about uh, the final drafts. Yeah, so Salah is back. Yeah, yeah. We, I, I kind of guess. Kind of guess. Rich, you? What are you thinking, Ben Rama? Uh, yeah, Rama, I'm. Ben I'm Rama, looking at. Rama, I'm ben looking Rama. at Vardy. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm. I'm. I'm, I'm, I'm going to go. I'm going to go Salah, and I will laugh if James Milner scores a penalty. Yeah, <laughs> and starts ahead of Zemikas. Yeah, <laughs> that left back. Yeah, but yeah, I think. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely going Salah, and Dave. I think you've alluded to. That being your your plan as well. Yeah, based on how much I laugh when you ask the question. <laughs> yeah, I, I did notice. Now I did now Mikel and his algorithm. He's not actually updated. He's not updated the the minutes fully on his algorithm. But just having a quick peek earlier today on his on his Patreon, which you can find at patreon.com forward slash transfer algorithm, or just just Google it. it. I mean, Salah looked like he was clear of of Fernandez, but obviously that would change in the coming days. But Mikel at the moment seems to agree with us, and I probably could Everyone. have told you that yeah. without even yeah. without even checking. Fair It'd be play. interesting to see all the captain polls this week. I'm sure we'll send one out on our Twitter account, and yeah, we'll we'll see what happens there. Fair play. Um, just wanted to read some feedback that we got. Someone really really nice. I think he's in the chat just now. Um, yeah, he is. But he wrote out this lovely little paragraph of of just really niceness made us smile we're going to read it out uh the comedy level has this is from nuclear atoms he said the comedy level has really gone up in this video you are getting the hang of videos now with all the right close-ups and sudden sound bits thank you very much mate appreciate that and then he made fun of uh rich's manny over bruno and talked about that for a bit but the first bit just saying nice things about our videos really really do appreciate that um keep yeah no thank you and i mean to be honest reading that feedback as well was another reason that i realized going for manny was, was a bad <laughs> idea you, you were right nuclear atoms and uh, thank you Honestly, thank you for that. And that was um, obviously based on saying comedy. That was based on um, a video. Actually, it was a video of my team reveal. So, absolute comedy. That's comedy. Not the the, this podcast isn't comedy, but <laughs> that video is. My my team reveals are <laughs> hilarious. Um, <laughs> and of course, thank you to Fantasy Football Hub who've done the majority of the screens here today. Um, if you've got any feedback on different things you'd like to see on the screen or how we're translating that to audio because we are still getting used to that. You know, mm -hmm. Please let us know. In the podcast description, YouTube description, there'll be a link. You can get 25% off at Fantasy Football Hub. Just going from there. Starts from about £1.50 a month. Yep. And, and uh, subscribe to the YouTube the Patreon. channel. <laughs> Patreons are brilliant. And thank you to Ron Frosk and Emma for that work that yes. you know earlier. I'd, I'd have loved to put more of Ron Frosk's stuff on here. Um, but obviously being Game Week 1, we had a lot to get through. Um, an awful lot. And we've just about managed it. Just join the Slack channel, guys. That's all you have to do. Then you get access to it. I can't We're wait. We're asking for a lot of things, though, because you also need to join our league. Um, so the surgery <laughs> league code is for you to, we need to, do, we need to stagger this out. <laughs> yeah, this reminds me of, I remember I went to Bangkok and there was people like surrounding me trying to sell me suits and um, to buy insects to eat. And I was like, no, leave me alone. This is basically what we're doing. <laughs> But you can stop at this point. Yeah, for um, so you 42, to 740. 742. There you go. Um, thank you to our guest. Mate, you have Thanks been amazing. Thanks for having me on again. You've been amazing. It's been a uh, I'm not sure I was helping, helping too much, but at least we have talked about some topics and looked at some drafts and uh, tossed everything up with Zemikas. So I guess uh, people have something to think about. And yeah. It was great, great being on again. 
So you can yeah, follow Stefan at his last name. Yeah. yeah, there you go. Trad. <laughs> I'm, I'm a proud of... owner of a, of a Twitter handle without any FPL in it. So it's I'm, lovely. I'm, it looks good. I'm using my name. I had no idea I was going to do FPL when I made my tri- Twitter account. Well, that'll be oh. that'll be the reason then. Eh? Yeah, <laughs> that'll be it. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So, I think is that us. That's us. Yeah, but thanks, thanks again, Stefan. I'm sure. We, uh, oh, I hope we will have you on again soon. Because um, and thank you for all the work. You know, you we've obviously been speaking for a couple of days trying to get everything ready for the pod. So that's really appreciated as well. And I'm yep. sure we will see you soon, and you'll be in the top hundred this year. Yeah, sure. Hundred percent. Okay. <laughs> Alongside both of us, because our teams yep. are so great because of you. <laughs> Not the same team, but yeah. Uh, so... I, I love I love this optimism ahead of Game Week One. Like a few <laughs> days, one week ahead, and everyone's saying, "Ah, oh, this is just oh, why didn't I do this? Why didn't I do that? Everything's gone to hell." No, I'm gonna yes. win FPL this season. I it's am gonna confident. happen every time. <laughs> I'm extremely confident. All right, thank you everyone for watching. You guys have been a wonderful audience. Thank you very much for listening. You guys are amazing. Thank you very much for subbing and doing all the stuff and joining everything. It's great of you guys. Um, thank you to our guest. Thanks, Rich, as always, for being a lovely host. You beautiful man. And we will see you guys next Monday for our game week two pod. I guess. Um, scary isn't it it's I know. coming around fast I know alright well, one last thing to say Rich up the pod Stefan up the pod yes up the pod guys see you next week yeah bye okay bye <laughs> <laughs>